Now that we have some idea about the different grammatical elements of graphics, let's see how this works in practice. The grammar of graphics is implemented in R using the ggplot2 package, which was one of the first packages developed by the prolific statistician and R programmer Hadley Wickham. Essentially, we construct plots by layering grammatical elements on top of each other and use aesthetic mappings to define our visualizations. We are going to go through each grammatical element in depth in this and the next course. Here, I'll introduce a data set which will be used throughout the videos, and we'll go over some simple examples. The first layer is data. Obviously, we need some data to plot. I'm going to use several different data sets in the course videos, one of which is the classic IRIS data set collected by Edgar Anderson in the 1930s and thereafter popularized by R.A. Fisher. The data set contains information on three IRIS species, Setosa, Virginica, and Versicolor. Four measurements were taken from each plant, the petal length and width, and the sepal length and width. You're probably familiar with what petals are. They're the colorful part of a flower. Sepals are the outer leaves of a flower. They're typically green, but in this case, they're also colorful. There are 50 specimens of each species. The data is stored in an object called iris. There are five variables, the species and one for each of the properties that were measured. The next layer is aesthetics, which tells us which scales we should map our data onto. This is where the second main component of the grammar of graphics comes into play. On top of layering the grammatical elements, it's here that we establish our aesthetic mappings. In this case, we're going to make a scatter plot. So we're going to map the sepal length onto the x aesthetic and the sepal width onto the y aesthetic. The third essential layer allows us to choose the geometry. That means how the plot will look. After we've established our three essential layers, we have enough instructions to make a basic scatter plot. It's pretty rough, so to get a more meaningful and cleaner visualization, we'll have to use the other layers. The next layer we'll use is facets, which dictates how to split up our plot. In this case, we want to make three separate plots, one for each of the species under consideration. The statistics layer can be used to calculate and add many different parameters. For example, here we've chosen to add a linear model to each of the three subplots. Next comes the coordinates layer which allows us to specify the precise dimensions of the plot. Here, we've also cleaned up the labeling and the scaling of both the x and y axes. And finally, the theme layer controls all the non-data ink on our plot, which allows us to get a nice looking, meaningful, and publication quality plot directly in R. Let's explore these concepts further in the exercise.